Hello, thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Hannah Fernandez and you're watching SCORE TV. SCORE is a nonprofit organization dedicated to helping small businesses across the United States get off the ground, grow, and achieve their goals through education and mentorship. So whether you are a new entrepreneur or you've been in business for a long time, our SCORE mentors could offer you free business mentoring and other resources for the life of your business. To connect with us, check out our website at chicago.score.org. You can also email us at info at scorechicago.org or call us at 312-353-7724. Today we're going to talk about how the Chicago Toy and Game Group, or SHITAG for short, promotes innovation and builds community through play. With me today is Mary Cousin the president and founder of SHITAG. Mary, thank you so much for being here today. Oh, thank you for having me. This is very exciting. I'm so excited to have you. And uh, the toy industry is driven by innovators who, sh who have the vision and the passion to not only shape the toy business, but also bring joy and magic to countless childhoods and families. So would you tell us about the Chicago Toy and Game Group, or SHITAG for short, and your mission there? Oh, yes. Um, our mission is to promote play and innovation. And part of promoting play and innovation is telling the story of the toys and games and how they became their toys and games. And yes. so when you tell the story, um, the consumer connects with the product, right? And that story is the inventor's story. And so, you know, if, if, if you've sold a, a million songs, you're on the cover of Rolling Stone, mm -hmm. a million books in New York bestseller list, but 80 million Jengas, nobody knows who you are. So we're here to tell that story. And surprisingly, think about this. Um, Taylor Swift song, um, Shake It Up, Shake It Up, mm -hmm. right? Well, 16 times more Jengas were sold than that song. You're what? kidding. No. And isn't it funny? And you don't know who the inventor of Jenga is. I no, bet. and I love Jenga. Exactly. And Leslie Scott, she is just awesome. So Fantastic. it's our mission to get people to know those toy and game inventors. I love it because I was actually just at an ice cream shop playing Jenga with my niece and nephew and my, and my friends and family. So. Oh, really? So do yeah. you cheat? You know, you know, there's two ways to play. One, you're not supposed to touch well, but you're only supposed to touch with one hand. Most people take two hands. Oh, ah, see, you didn't know. I didn't know. know that, but I try to go like this. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not using the other hand. I know, but people don't even know it's cheating when you use two hands. Isn't that the funniest thing? But I didn't know that. I know. People, everyone just assumes they know how to play. It's kind of funny. So next time that I play with others, I'll go ahead and make sure. Yes. To let everybody know that. Thank you. The stuff that you learn every day. It, I know. It's funny, right? <laughs> and it's it, fun. Exactly. And Mary, how did you get inspired to invent, produce, and also license your own toys and games? Can you take us back to your story of when you first started? Sure. So I was in real estate for about 23 years. I didn't told. expect that. <laughs> I know. It's true. And, um, and But I needed a creative outlet, and so I had a friend who worked for a company called Western Publishing. Mm -hmm. Hasbro ended up buying them, but at the time he worked there and he would bring down all these cool prototypes from other inventors. And he would tell the stories of the inventors, and then some of them would go on to be Pictionary or, you know, big names, Pretty Pretty Princess. And I kept thinking, well, I'm playing their prototypes before they're even popular, right? And mm -hmm. how hard can this be? I have an MBA. I'm smart. I can figure mm -hmm. this out. Oh, there is, it is so difficult to come up with a, a winning toy or game. It's, there is magic. You said magic earlier. There is yeah. magic in each. And I must have invented dozens and dozens of games before I actually came up with one that mm -hmm. was a hit, Hollywood's Real Spiel. And I had a partner here in Chicago, June Phobes Keeley. And she and I spent, a, before the internet, yes. so we spent a year and a half watching movies to get the movie lines for the game. And um, it was great fun, and it was a commercial success, which was good. Sure. And then my daughter invented a game, and, cool. um, and then we invented a couple more, and then I just started helping other inventors. So That's awesome. And, and I ended up putting the, the real estate job after... After, you know, you have to reach a point. You never quit your day job until you're ready. You know, that's, that is a, there is a fine line at some point. When you're you should so right be. about that. Yeah. Exactly. Because being an entrepreneur is stressful as it is, but if you lose an income as well, yes. that can double the pain. So that's a great, great point. 
And Mary, could you tell us about the Chicago Toy Game Foundation and the Young Inventor Challenge? What prompted you to start that opportunity? So our Young Inventor Challenge has been yeah. going for 14 years. Mm -hmm. And we, I actually started it because my daughter had invented a game. And I thought, you know, this is a great way to get kids involved in STEM and mm -hmm. get, getting creative. And also, it, it's developing kids to move up into our industry at some point, getting them, you know, no, kids don't know where toys and games come from. So if they're inventing them, then they meet other inventors and then they understand the process. And over the last 14 years, we one of our poster kids, if you will, mm -hmm. for success, Nick Metzler from Orland Park. Yes. So he won seven years ago and his game got licensed, his game squashed, and it's Fantastic. still out on retail shelves. But that's not even the end of the story. Wow. He was then, um, he interned at a company called Spin Master, mm -hmm. and then they hired him. So he is now going around the world looking for new toys and games for Spin Master to license. And he is also still inventing toys and games. It's a real success story. He also comes back every single year to talk to the kids and MC the event. That's a wonderful story. Uh, he is he is absolutely fantastic. And we've had... Um, I don't know, I want to say the seven or eight other licenses, like two two girls from Palos Heights, um, 10 year old girls, 10 year old girls, one with shipwreck of, or sh ship, ship full of treasures, mm -hmm. and that's still in Target. Cool. And three games launched this year um, from kids that had won the previous years. So it's really, it's exciting to see these kids. Yes. I cannot tell you. It just fills your heart. and. Um, and we have a hundred mentors from our toy and game industry that give back to these kids and help them, which is even and the, and some of those mentors who are like in charge of games at Target or at Hasbro or Mattel or Spin Master, they have said that this is the reason they they have found that this is the reason they're in the industry. Like they rediscover why they they got into our industry. It's awesome. That resonates with me because whenever I talk to SCORE mentors, it's exactly the reason why they keep, you know, coming back and also mentor business owners mm. because like you said, it reignites their own passion. Yes. And one of the things that I love about you doing that is that you're starting to expose these kids early and when you know the process, you really have this deep appreciation for that yes. toy. It's true. It's very true. And kids really come up with great ideas. Because mm -hmm. who better than a kid to know what a kid wants? Exactly. And so in order for a kid to qualify, is there a certain age limit? Or what do they need to do to go ahead and, and apply for the Inventor Challenge? Oh, so it's 6 to 18. And okay. anyone can enter. We even have a design guide that mm -hmm. was put together by an educator and a professional inventor. He was the inventor of Bobbit and Perplexus, and his wife is an educator, and the two of them, um, Alicia Alexander, they put together the most wonderful design guide for kids to use. That's fantastic. And now let's you know take this back to business, because many entrepreneurs, professionals, and business owners are stressed out, and they focus heavily on work that there's little time for fun. It's true. So can you talk to us about the importance of play in business and in life? Oh, it's it's critical, actually. Mm -hmm. It is, um, and it's funny because some of the most successful companies today are putting in play areas, like Google, for example. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I've been out to their offices, and they have whole areas just devoted to play and de-stressing and... Um, or even even toy inventors have to, to de-stress and play. So like <laughs> Big Monster Toy, which is the largest toy and game inventing company in the world, right here in Chicago at 21 South Racine, mm -hmm. they have like an area for pinball and different things so that their employees can de-stress from inventing toys and games. So um, it's it's absolutely critical. Um, the you know, the one thing that all serial killers have in common is that they didn't play with others, as I know, it's kind of, there's a whole TED yeah. Talk on it. And, mm -hmm. um, and there's also TED Talks talking about how if you take time to play, it opens your mind up to new possibilities. And um, it's absolutely, oh, and think mm -hmm. about this, like how many companies are now having game nights? That's true. It is. It's a trend, big trend. That's true. And it's just so great for creativity and also your mental health. Mm, absolutely. Because sometimes, even for me, if I'm thinking about a new business idea or an approach or strategy, sometimes you just need to go ahead and walk away yes. and do something fun. It's true. That's why I always have a puzzle out on, on uh, my table. Always. And <laughs> so if idea. I need to walk away, that puzzle, it can take two months to finish it, but 
if I just, you know, it, it really you have to focus on it and and you forget about your problems and sometimes that solution works out, doesn't it? Exactly, exactly. So those of you listening, if you're stressed out or stuck or stunt on something, just stop for a second, right? And do yes. something fun because it truly does help. It really does. And so for those who have an idea or an invention, what are the steps to take a product to market in the toy industry? Sure. So the first thing is to Google your idea. You you know, really search the internet because mm -hmm. you would be shocked how many people will come to like to our inventor conferences or call me and say, Oh, I've invented blah 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 and it's really already out on the market. And you really have to do your homework. Yes. Just search the internet, go to retail stores, ask the retailers, have they ever seen anything like this? Mm -hmm. It's critical. And then if there truly isn't anything out there already, then build a prototype and play test. And when I say play test, I mean not with friends and family. Okay. You do not want them because <laughs> they will tell you everything is fantastic mm -hmm. and fun and that's not what you want. You want somebody who's, who's going to tell you the truth. So you want to maybe go to your local library and get a group together or the schools. A lot of schools mm -hmm. actually do play testing for people. And those people will give you honest feedback. And you and there are you can search the internet for questions and and what you want to do is just set down the toy or game mm -hmm. with the instructions and walk away. Like you don't want to be there guiding them or I see. talking to them. Let them figure it out. And also um, so they call it, and so that's what a lot of people do at our fair too. Mm -hmm. So they come into our fair and they have a table and they talk to the consumers and have them, you know, get the feedback from them. And you, because they're people that they don't know. Right. They're just walking up. And then also it very much, it helps to go to your local toy and game store and ask the retailer what they think and what they think the price point would be. Mm -hmm. and and um, what colors maybe, and make sure your packaging stands out on the shelf. And some people will come up with some oddball design and okay. it can't even stay on the shelf. Like you have to like think about how your toy or game will look on the shelf. And then of course, contact score because yes. <laughs> the financials are critical, absolutely critical. And so, um, but it's a lot of fun. And enjoy the process mm -hmm. along the way and always be persistent. I think a lot of people give up too early. And, um, you know, that's a great point too because a lot of the people think that it's just the creative stuff, but, you know, there's a lot of operational and financial yes. stuff that goes behind the scenes in order for a, an entrepreneur or a small business owner to make a whole product and eventually a company work. It's true. And, so, and, uh, and sometimes your people who are skilled in the creative end are not skilled in the number end and vice versa, right? So always ask for help. Exactly. And what challenges do you see new inventors face? So a new inventor, and I face this myself when mm -hmm. I first started, is nobody wants to talk to you. Like, you know, the companies, meaning the companies for licensing, mm -hmm. because they get pinged thousands of times a year and they just can't possibly answer all those questions, right? Sure. They can't see all those products. Mm -hmm. And so they use a system of agents and, mm -hmm. and shows like mine, I think, um, where they can just go once okay. and see them in a very organized fashion, one after another. Um, they just don't have the bandwidth, which is sad, but right. um, because everybody has ideas, right? So how do you stand out? Because you said that a lot of these, um, the toy companies and manufacturers are bombarded, right? By a lot Absolutely. of pitches. So how does one stand out? I mean, is it... Is there a process to it or is wow, it hit or miss? that's a great quote. It's, well, you, you really have to show up. You just okay. have to show up at mm -hmm. the different shows, whether it's our conferences, our fair, or, or Astra's show or some show. You mm -hmm. just have to be there. You know, they, what is it? Winning is that 99% winning is just it, being there, right? Definitely. And you have to, you just can't call up and assume somebody's just going to hear your idea and they're going to want it. You have to be there with your prototype and, and the proof that it works. Gotcha. And so what does it take to be successful in the toy industry? So uh, how would an entrepreneur increase? Because I know there's no guaranteed right, uh, guarantees. So right. how do you increase your chances of driving that, those sales and also getting licensing deals? So if you can get a, a higher licensing mm -hmm. percentage if you prove sales. I see. Um, professional inventors don't bother with that in general. They mm -hmm. just, they're all about licensing. And mm -hmm. for them, 
they're they're inventing like a hundred different things and they're just pitching a hundred different things knowing only five are going to be taken mm -hmm. whereas many new inventors have one idea and it's um they're putting all their eggs in one basket but you have to you have you can't get too personal with your idea sometimes, mm -hmm. right? So there's different types of inventors, mm -hmm. right? And um, so it's just, it's, how do you get, um, it's just, I guess it's really mostly persistence and you just mm -hmm. have to keep at it. I mean, sure. sometimes it takes years to get right. to where you want. It took me years, mm -hmm. for sure, so. And you kept going, you kept I persisting. Did. I just, you just have to love what you do, right? And just and just don't give up. And business fundamentals are, you know, are, are similar and the same because I, what I heard you say is that you got to be prolific. So you got to keep inventing and you can't be attached to right. one idea or it's one invention. True. And the same thing even, you know, for small businesses that are listening out there, sometimes if they have that one sale, that one client, they're so attached to that person, that entity, or that organization where, yes, definitely take good care of them, but you have to keep going. You have to keep yes. making sure that you're putting yourself out there and getting more and more sales and more clients and customers in. It's true. You have to pivot. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. If you put all your eggs in one basket, you're not going to... I mean, we've we've changed our events as we've gone along. We've dropped mm -hmm. events, like yeah. events I was passionate about, but they they didn't work. So, so you bring them back later in a different form, right? And um, and you know, people don't like to hear their babies ugly, right? Right, That's exactly. Good, so, <laughs> yeah. Um, but you have to be willing to accept that. And it goes back to your point, you know, when you're testing out an idea, don't go to a friend or family because who's going to tell you everything's amazing? Exactly. You've got to go to somebody objective or even a SCORE mentor or another mentor that, where they're going to go ahead and tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's true. And that's the only way you're going to go ahead and grow. It's true. You want to hear the ugly. Exactly. You don't want to hear, right. Ex mm -hmm. Yes. And when things don't go as planned, how do you keep things fun and how do you stay motivated? Well, that's when you throw out lifelines to friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, d never underestimate a friend. Like, a friend will mm -hmm. always listen to you. And um, and I, and you should always be a good friend, too, to other people. I, I think sometimes people underestimate. There's always someone there willing to listen. Mm -hmm. And um, in, in don't hesitate, like, when, when things get rough, to, to call somebody. And just talk it through. Sometimes just talking it through, too. Mm -hmm. You can figure out the answer. So, Exactly. And um, so, you, you know, you brought this earlier today when we were talking that a lot of inventors are forgotten or they remain unknown. You know, earlier in the conversation you were saying that, you know, everybody loves Jenga, everybody's played Jenga, yet we don't know who that inventor is. Why do you think that is? Why do inventors become forgotten even when their inventions live on? I don't know, and I'm, I've, I'm struggling with that, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to change it with our Toy and Game Inventor of the Year Awards, mm -hmm. and, um, and that more getting Wikipedia pages now, mm -hmm. and actually, it used to be the companies didn't want to put the name of the inventor on the box. Okay. But there are some companies like Educational Insights, which is locally owned too. They've started putting the pictures on the back of the box with bios, and they'll tell you that it increases sales. And I believe it because if people pick up the box, mm -hmm. right? They're looking at the box, and then you flip it over. And if you see someone's picture, you start reading about that person, you feel like you know them a bit, right? And you're going yes. to, to purchase that. And... Um, I don't know, I think it's critical and it is starting to change, but it's just taking a lot longer to change um, than I thought. Like I yeah. thought 17 years ago when I started doing this that, you know, a few years people will catch on to this and, but, um, but it's, you know, it, it have persistence, as yes, I said exactly. earlier, persistence. So it'll happen and it is happening. And that also shows the story of storytelling because if you know somebody's story, somehow you feel that connection. Yes. And when you know their struggles and successes and family and backgrounds, you're more than likely to support them as well. Absolutely. Isn't that what Kickstarter does? Kickstarter yes. tells the story, right? Exactly. Um, yeah, and actually, you know, what's so interesting is board games mm -hmm. are the largest segment of Kickstarter. Is that shocking? I didn't know that. It's like uh, it's something crazy. Like twenty-seven percent of all Kickstarters are board games. Who would have ever 
guests, but they're telling their story and then they're selling their game. And a game is sometimes nothing but a story too, right? So. so that's another good avenue for somebody who's invented a game or a board game is to go ahead and go one of those uh, crowdfunding sites. Yes, yes. But I would recommend that they talk to somebody from SCORE first because you have to get your costs down before you go to Kickstarter. Because if you get funded and then you find out you can't produce it, you're in trouble. Good point. So. so what's the best part of being a toy inventor or a game innovator? Tell me about that. It's the people. Oh my goodness. The toy and game inventors are the most awesome group of people. They are so funny and so creative. There's one inventor, Mary Jo Ruder, right now, mm -hmm. who's doing a cross-country trip, and she's just putting googly eyes on everything as she goes across <laughs> the country. It's hysterical. And um, they're just funny people, funny, creative people. And and, there, and it's, you know, it's funnier, too. It's like there's an inventor up in Walk. Her name is Peggy Brown. Mm -hmm. She invents lampshades. She invents um, ride-on toys. Like, a, it's, I'm trying to think, like a costume for your bike. So, you've, so you're, like, riding a unicorn or riding a horse. Like, and then she'll go to inventing games. It's like creative people can invent anything. And like the inventor of Bop It, he was inventing toilet items before he started inventing toys and games. It's a, it's just being creative and thinking out of the box and how to build something and create something different. And they're just the funnest people, really. Just, I don't know. I wish everybody could get to know some of these toy and game inventors. Absolutely. At the end of the day, um, everything is all about the people yes. and the ones that we serve. So the idea of starting a new toy company may seem daunting, but pitching a toy idea to an established manufacturing is challenging as well. So when deciding between keeping, leasing, or selling an idea, what advice can you offer aspiring toy and game inventors? That is a great question. In, in our conferences, it's funny, we've, mm -hmm. we've evolved to take people down both paths so they can see the pros and cons for both. Mm -hmm. So if you are going to market your own, you know, manufacture and market your own, you really have to learn a lot of new skill sets, right, to do that. And you have to be willing to devote a lot of time to do it because to launch a product, you have to convince retailers to carry your product. And if you've never had anything out there before, you have nothing to go back on, right? And so you have to, like I did when I started, I made phone calls. Like I would go to work, mm -hmm. and then I would come back and call the people on the West Coast. Before work, I would call all the people on the East Coast to try to get my game into stores. And it's it's a lot more work than anybody would ever guess, right? And then you're also trying to enter contests and you're trying to get media written about. Whereas in licensing, you're pitching it to a company and then in that case, you're just getting the royalty. You don't have to do any of this other work. But you have to think about what other lines that company has. And so when you're talking to them, you have to tell them how this fits in their line. So maybe you're inventing to a brand they already have. Um, Maybe it's a Nerf product, and you say, look, this is why Nerf works with this. And, and so you, you sell it in that way. Or, or this is a cool Barbie accessory. Um, you have to think, like, think what they're looking for. Like if you're going to go off the left field, they're not going to, in general, they won't buy a new product that they have to do all the hard work on branding. You know, they're, they're selling into Walmart, and they have to have a sure thing. So... Um, so yeah, think like, look at the company's other lines and then pitch it that way. Got it. And so I know there's a fair coming up here in Chicago, so can you tell those that are watching and listening right now, when is the next Chicago Toy and Game Fair? Sure, it's always the weekend before Thanksgiving, um, the same we weekend as the Festival of Lights Parade. So think about this, you can go downtown, park at Navy Pier, come to our fair all day long, have fun, go out to Michigan Avenue to the Festival of Lights Parade, have more fun there. And really, it's a great start to the holidays to be able to do that. And, you know, or if your kid, if you have a child who's inventive, they can mm -hmm. enter the Young Inventor Challenge and be at the fair and meet some other toy and game inventors who are mentoring them. But we have stage events. It's very interactive. And so many inventors are there in booths. It's just very exciting. Oh, and this year we have the world's 
largest kid powered rocket. So like five cool. kids will be jumping up and down to power this rocket and then it's going to blast off once an hour. I'm really excited about that. It's going to be there's a, the guy who builds a lot of Nerf guns. He's in New York and that's all, and he has some one person dedicated to building this rocket. Fantastic. Awesome. And for those interested, what is your website and what is the best way to connect with you? Sure, the website is shytag.com, C H I like Chicago, T A G like toy and game. And then we have contact information right on the website, um, the telephone number, email, or you can just email mary at shytag.com, and I'm happy to answer your questions. Fantastic. Mary, thank you so much for being here again today. Oh, thank you for having me. This has been fun. It has. And to those of you that are watching right now, if you'd like to volunteer, we're always looking for more SCORE mentors, so please connect with us. Our website is chicago.score.org. My name is Hannah Fernandez. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you again next time on SCORE TV.